guys, this is Josh with Kirin here to talk to you about ohm measurements or resistance testing through the N2. Now, I am going to go ahead and point out here on the tool, as you can see, you've got your ground port and your ohms port. What you would go ahead and do is plug that guy in there. In our case, we're going to go ahead and use our red lead to go into the ohms up top. And you can actually take uh, your ohm measurements, and this is going to be what's called an isolated ohms test or a resistance test and you will be able to between these two points determine the resistance between those two areas. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you resistance measurements on a fuel sender unit. It is a variable resistor and I'm going to go ahead and use our clamps just to go in here. Now what we're using is our, our back probe pins that come with the back probe lead set. But before we do that, something you always want to do is you want to ohm out your leads. So in this case, when I connect those, notice there's a bit of a reading there. Once it stabilizes, give it a second. I'm going to go ahead and tap the zeroing to there. So that way we can get one of the more accurate readings possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and clamp in here on our resistor. Now in this case, you can see that it's reading 109 ohms, 108 ohms which is uh, good, that's fine, that's great. Now in this case, as we move the, the uh, float here for this fuel sender unit, well, you can't really see in, in anything in that data. You know, yeah, it jumped around a bit, but what does that mean? Yes, I can hit my min and my max, and we can go ahead and take a look at that as I pump through there, and okay, 475 ohms. What does that mean to me? Not really much. But what I can do, and one of the great advantages of the N2, so I can graph what I'm looking at. And so in this case, we have our own measurements here. And before I do that, let's go ahead and kick up our sample rates. So we're going to move that up to a thousand. So as I am graphing what I'm reading, or measuring rather, you can see what's going on. Now that's just the small float uh, between the 105.8 and 105.9. That's why you get that movement there. If you were to just round down, you know, it's a solid number. But let's take a look at this together. As I move the float, you will be able to see what the float did. Now, its variable resistor went ahead and kicked up to as high as 1,000 ohms, then kicked back down. What we should have seen is a gradual ramp or a gradual decline in its readings. We're going to go ahead and go the other way with that and take a look. And as you can see, we have our spikes our dropouts, our spikes, dropout, spike, dropout. And this actually goes in line with what our user was experiencing. The fuel sender unit was being, is used by the computer to tell the vehicle where the fuel level is at. And so as the customer was driving and uh, they would have a full tank, as the fuel sender moved, you know, they would get a dropout. So their full tank would turn to a half tank or an empty tank. Then after a little bit, uh, in it here, and we'll move it slower after a little bit. Uh, as we move it slower, you can see more of those dropouts and spikes. We didn't rush over them. You know, the, the customer was actually getting a moving float as they, I'm sorry, moving fuel gauge line as they were driving and it would move around. They couldn't accurately tell how much fuel they had at any given time. It was a hit or a miss. So in this case, and that one was a lot cleaner, we didn't move as fast. I'm sorry, it's slow. Uh, you know, this lines up perfectly with their, their complaint. So that is it for graphing the, the uh, resistance. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, please do feel free to sign up into the community for more hit tips and tricks, as well as uh, the ability to ask questions and, of course, schedule your one-on-one -on -one trainings or, you know, tech support. Have a great day.